two. Knit, knit one. one. Heart, heart two. two. Sorry, Episode. I have a pencil in my hand. <laughs> Episode thirty one. Look how big my hands look today. This is today is my big hand day. Remember when you had that big hand day? Look. I thought I had. Oh yeah. Yeah, I did. I remember that. Let's... My hands look big. Ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> episode 31. Episode 31. I'm Sheila, also <laughs> known as Sheila D37 on both Ravelry and Spark People. And I'm Wen Wendy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Winnie on Ravelry and Penny Winnie 2 on Smart People. I'm not all the way awake. I'm sorry. I didn't know who I was for a minute. I need to give you the hand, but before you jumped in, I intros first. Oh, I was ready, ready for the intro. Oh, okay. Yes, um, I'm just doing our daily count, 431 members, Yay. only 69 members away from the big 500 member extravaganza. <laughs> <laughs> you put in something I don't know about. We're going to give it prizes. I know, but how many? Because I don't have that many. Well, no, I'll we'll have to buy some. We, have, we have money now. I we know. actually have earned some commissions from... Cafe Press. Did they put it in a PayPal account? No, oh, that yeah. waits until I get up. I told them not to do PayPal until it's at least $50. We have oh. made $17 on Cafe Press. So. I'm using Give Me Coffee and No One Gets Hurt mug. Yeah, I need that mug. I too. waited for my coffee until you came over so I could have it hot. Oh, well, that's, that's good. Yeah, I needed <laughs> hot coffee. It's cold in here, and I turned on the heat. It is cold. It, it's cold. I know your husband's going to kill you. Good thing he doesn't watch the show. <laughs> well, you know, the sad part is, is before I turned on the heat, it was 64 in the house, which really is what we keep it in the wintertime. Yeah. I just boosted it to 67 to take the chill off. Oh, yeah. And then I saw you in a sweater. I'm like, I better turn that down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, she'll be too hot. I keep my house at 70. Mmm. Only during the day, though. At the only 10 time I think I would ever have it at seventy is if you were coming over or any other guests. Were I coming keep it over, at it seventy. Never be at year 70. round. My house is seventy degrees year round. No. <laughs> That's how I like it. No. And um, but only from um nine a.m. to ten p.m. and then it goes down to fifty five. We have a timer on our heat um that goes off at seven a.m. Meaning it goes on at six thirty. Goes off at. 7.38 when we would typically leave the house. If I'm sleeping, it stays off because I'm upstairs under a nice warm blanket. If I'm not, I'll boost it up to 64, 65. And then it comes back on at like 4.30. Yeah. Because this was, we programmed this when we both actually worked. Well, that's what ours originally had a program like that. But since I'm home all day and I have to have my house at 70 degrees, I otherwise I'm freezing. I think well, it's at 68 right now. It might not be 70. I learned. I usually bump it up a little bit. I learned how to um, work the wood burning stove so that if I'm home and I'm not going to do any errands, then I will put wood in the wood burning stove. See, if I had a wood burning that. stove, I would use that instead of the heat. But since I don't, I keep it at 70 degrees. And we loaded one and a half cords of wood two or three weeks ago when it was like another 80 degree. <laughs> We can. Oh, I'm you'll like, be yeah. glad now. Well, we already used it. We cooked roasted marshmallows the other day. Cool. Outside, obviously. But. You go. Uh, Spark People shout out, Ricky NA50. Thanks for joining my friends. Thank you if you joined me. I don't know if you did because I can't tell. <laughs> I feel bad because I haven't checked Spark People in like a ton of time, but I'm going to get there. Yeah, I know. So you want I me to go it. first? You, no, I went last time. You go first. Well, I we like went it. in progression. I like it when you go first. And I just want to say, I have to say, I noticed Melissa and Sean of his and hers were on chairs. This time. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it better, Melissa? So oh, that better. couch just was not the good. The couch sucks you in. My couch was not good. So my first rate uh, on the dance card is my He Socks. Um, I'm still working on them, plugging away. This is one and a half because I still have the cuff of my other one done. But I've now turned the he did the heel flap, turned the heel, and I'm doing the decrease of my sock. So here is the cable pattern. I can show you better now that I'm in a chair. Going up here, doing the decrease of the gusset, it doesn't work the cable, and then you pick the cable back up on the foot. Well, that'll be nice. Yeah, I like that. This is. Uh, 
My He Socks by Andrea Dietrich, US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters. It's with Plymouth Yarn, Happy Feet, and the Olive Colorway. Cool. Yeah. I like it. I do too. I'm actually sad to see them go, but... I have that exact yarn in my stash. I really like how it knits up. I'll have to use it. Well, I think your mom was using it, and I'm like, oh, that really knits up nice. My mom like... has some nice Plymouth. The only time I used this was uh, for a hat. There was a pattern on Fabric Place when they uh, when they were open way back when that used Plymouth yarn for a hat. I don't even remember where the hat went. I'm sure I gave it away as a gift. I'm sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> like I so, I don't even know anything about that, but I can guess that that's where it is. So if I didn't have to do the cuff on the other one because I forgot my computer last week, yeah. I have a feeling I would have been done with at least one sock. But there it is. So that's one thing on the needle. Um, the other thing is um, I'm doing another top-down mitten. I'm going to put this on here. <laughs> top-down <laughs> mitten. Better. It does. Using Rachel Diabolical Yarns pattern that I have all hands on deck. I'm using Lorna's Laces Shepherd Sport Team Spirit colorway blue and white on, oh, you know... I'm using um, 2.75 millimeters. I know that for a fact. US 2. US 2. And I'm doing a slip stitch pattern. Love it. And this slip stitch pattern is from um, the Harvest Dew Socks by Rose Hiver, H-I-V-E-R, Hiver, Hiver. And I test knit those socks for her earlier in the spring or something like that. So um, she has socks cuffed down. I'm just reversing the stitch pattern for top-down mitten, basically, um, or toe-up sock, however you'd like to look at it. And I really like it. I think it's pretty. It looks like a Christmas tree. It does kind of look like Only a Christmas tree right not, now. You know, it's blue and white, so I'm not really um, bad. I was the, just thinking that. It looks so. like a Christmas tree. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Uh, you see how the stripes go, and they're almost negative. Yeah. But I like it a lot. This will... I don't know, maybe for me, maybe for a gift. I'll throw it <laughs> it'll be for a gift. I'll just tell you right now, it'll be for a gift. I don't know. I you do never like keep mittens. anything I that know, you make. I know. You're too generous. And then my last but not least is I did cast on the Simple Ripped Cowl by Orange Flower, the one that Melissa gave us the yarn for. And did this... you read the notes about knitting it on a looser gauge so it's not too stiff fabric? Did you read that? I did. This is on size 10. If you think I need to go up more, let me know. It's not that tight. I, I, I don't know. I guess it's okay. It'll probably block a little less. It'll be a little more drapey when you block it. Yeah, it should be. I mean, I can see through it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's pretty. Uh, so this, so you derailed me. I'm this sorry. This is Morocco <laughs> Peruvia. I was using, just looking at it this morning. Using... Knit Timo's Modifications, which is you knit four, purl through the back loop to get this nice little more defined ridge. See? And so this, this is what the front looks like. The whole idea of the simple rib cowl is you wear it like this with this draping over it. Yeah. That's how it looks. And I, I never even read the full instructions, so I it's, a it's a free pattern. It's a free pattern. It's a free pattern, and she did it in worsted weight, cast on 100 stitches, and I'm a tight knitter, so I cast on 100 stitches, purling through the back loop. And then what you do, every three inches, I think Melissa said, you tie a little bead with, like, these two ribs together with a little bead. And I was talking to somebody, Melissa gave us some nice beads to go with it. I have some nice pink ones that I might throw in every now and again. These are mine. Pretty. I don't have my beads with me. Yes, I do. I think I do. They're just, I'm using it. Yes. So these go well with my fabric that I have, my mm -hmm. um, yarn, but I may throw a pink one. That'd be fun. Yeah. I like that. I have that. some extra pink ones. So I don't know. We'll discuss whether or not I rip this out and go larger. Who knows? <laughs> um, I'll tell you though, Nidimo actually only did um, one a few inches from the top and a few inches from the bottom. She didn't do beads all the way up on No, there. but... Are you going to do it all the way? I don't know. You know, I was thinking it would be really pretty, too. She only did them on the same stripe, like, together, but it would be kind of fun to make them An lattice. That would be pretty. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking that when I was looking at the pattern. So, um, we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. Um, 
I'm not loving it so much. It's not as mindless as I need sometimes. Oh, because you have to pay attention to the ribs. Well, and I think the yarn is a little splitty for mindless. Oh, it's, it is a single ply. It is a single ply. So, it's a nice yarn. I thought at first when I was winding it up that I was sneezing from it, but I'm not when I knit with it. So, that's good. Good. It probably um, just had, you know, like fibers and dust oh, I'm shooting sure. off when you were winding it. So, that's all that I have on my needles. Wow, you have a lot. Three. Oh, that's three. not a lot. No. And it seems it's like a typical. lot. typical. I usually have about three going around. Yeah. I just, what it is, is I have a lot, two fingering weight yarns on the needle right now. and Ooh, Excuse that's me. That's slowing me down a little bit. All right, so on my needles, um, well, I'll do this one first. The Flower to Hexagon Blanket by Jessie Rayot. In your Cocoa Puff bag. And my Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. I got this at, um... Walmart like three years ago. They were a buck a piece. I oh, got wow. a bunch of them. Um, Cause I have a lot of project bags. They're of various kinds. Didn't get any love this week. But um, was the oh that came out nice. Didn't it come out nice? It, it looks that like that was one she was um, working on last week. I on did the it show. during the show. It really it, does look like a pansy. It looks like a pansy and and in, in the grass. Mm. I just I love doing this. And, um, it's really pretty. I know. It's going to be super. And look how big it's already getting. I'm so excited. Yeah. You know? The good thing is, is when you attach them, it can keep you warm while you're doing it. Oh, I know. I'm going to probably bring this on our Rhinebeck trip yeah. to work on. I know. So, that's something i got to think about what to do. Because I'll be able to work on it again by then because that sweater will be done. But, yeah, I didn't get any love. But this is um, Flower to Hexagon Blanket with my modification of using just two colors instead of five. Um, it's designed by Jesse Rayot, and it's free on Ravelry, <coughs> and she has super cute pictures of the ones that she did. And um, she does hers in a worsted weight yarn, but I modified it by doing it in fingering weight so I could use up all of my sock blanket skeins and my sock leftovers. And um, I am working it on a USD or 3 needle, um, which is the appropriate crochet hook fingering for um, fingering weight yarn. Yeah, it's not too dense of a fabric, but certainly not too loose. No, it's perfect. I like that one too. I, I know. I love, and I love. Now the you're Halloween still just one. randomly grabbing. Yep, I randomly. Well, I've gotten away from totally randomly grabbing because sometimes, like, I I want to do a certain, like, I wouldn't want to do another pink right here, oh, right okay. next to the pink. So I'd. Pick oh, a but wouldn't color. you be able to put that someplace else if you did pick a pink? And... Yeah, well, I like to just attach it on, you know. So I like here. I'd probably pick a blue to go in this little area because it's so warm. Mm -hmm. For like, the outside edge, or just in yeah. Room? For like right here, I'd probably pick a blue. Like, no, meaning like blue outside. Oh yeah, blue outside. I randomly pick the inside one. I don't really care about that. Oh, okay. It's just more like I don't want the same color like bumping up against the same. Like other you don't want color. two oranges with two oranges. And on the you outside. can see right here, there's a lot of orange right here. So I did a blue here to make it more, very you know, to vary it a little bit, so it's not crazy. But I just love it. I can't wait to see it all blocked out and smooth. It'll be really pretty. So I'm going to be working on this. I, I, I was thinking I was going to just do a lap gan, but I might actually do a throw, like a couch size Ooh. throw. Okay. So that's that, which is super fun. Then um, I did re-knit the, the cuff to my Selvuvat or not mm. mitten on size two needles. Better? Yes, it's much better. Um, you can see it's just much better. That was just too small before. And, um... Oh, yeah. It's much better. Yeah. yeah. Last time I couldn't even... Yeah. No, I can't get it off without... No. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I did now, this... Did, when you ripped out, did you save the yarn when you started from or did you just... Oh, I just... It? Yeah. No, I, I ripped it out and okay. I knit back from what I had already knit. And you can see that... I haven't quite oh, used all right. it all. You like I wound it in the middle. Where you were. Yeah, I haven't quite gotten because I had quite a bit done on this. But I do like the um, larger needle size better. Yeah. I just think it's going to be a little wide for me. I have really small wrists, so well, like. It's, well, you can always. But I don't really care if it's wide. But once you get into the color work, it will probably pull in a little bit more. I think it will because it'll be on a net stitch. Um. So. What's I gonna say? I like it. Did you fix the ribs? I did. You count. can see I no longer have wonky ribs. I fixed the count. I actually looked at the directions this time. 
So, um, yeah. But since we're doing a mitten knit along in our group sometime in November, at the beginning of November. Yeah, although I cast on for a mitten too, but. I'm not going to work on this until we do that. So that didn't get any, stuff. that was, this is all the love that I got was just me redoing the cuff. And it, it does, I think it looks much nicer now. It does now. look much nicer. I can't bigger wait to see stitches. how it's going to look. I, I'm I'm excited for it. I love it. It'll be super cute. And I've wanted to knit that pattern for ever since I saw it come out. Excuse so me. So I'm really excited to try that. So that's that. And then the last thing that everyone is wondering about is Gawain by Allison Greenwell. I did finish the body of this sweater and the neckline last night. But my sadness is I have to, the neckline is just too wide. See? So what do you have to do? Rip back here and just do a little I am bit gonna, more? I, what I have to do, this is the sad part. This is where I ended. I'm going to have to rip back this whole shoulder strap to about here. And then I'll rip across here. <laughs> and then oh. I'll knit more to this. Because what you do is you go back and forth on the shoulder strap and consume a stitch by knitting two together or slipping and knitting together from the body. And I just want to go... I only have to do like um, maybe eight more rows. I just want to consume up to the point of the um, of the ribbing, where where the I mean of the pattern where it starts here, oh. so that the neckline will be it instead of being this wide. It'll be like that. And it'll look good on her unblocked. Yeah, but it's gonna block and be a little wider, so it will definitely be deeper. I it it will be bigger. It'll get longer, and um, yeah, I freaked out at first because when I tried it on, the boobs part was way up here, so it was really short. And then I realized, oh, I need to pull this down because I knit another inch onto the body before I added the sleeves, and I haven't blocked the top part. And you can feel the difference. Feel the difference in the very um, drape of the cloth. Like this is really drapey. Yeah. And this is so stiff. And I at first I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, it's not going to fit. But it, it when you pull it to the right areas that it should block out to, it fits well. I'm happy with it. Um, it should be Ryan Beck weather, sweater I weather hope Saturday. So. They're talking about 64-ish or so. I think it came out great. I'm really happy with how the T-straps came out. Um, I had a little crisis earlier in the week. When I first started to do them following Elizabeth Zimmerman's instructions, I had I was doing her increases and I got this knit, uh, can you see it? There we go. This knit line here on the, um, there we go, right there, it was on the front of the sweater. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, I don't like that. So I had to go online and figure out how to reverse the um, increase so that it doesn't Increase have that. Decrease. decrease. I had to reverse it and then I had to switch sides with it so that I had to figure out how to work it from the back and then I had to switch it because it had to go in the opposite direction. It was it was very confusing, but I took notes on it and I put it in my um your pattern my page. show notes. So I mean my show notes, my pattern page. So if anybody ever does this, you will know. And um, you know, it's not a hundred percent it's really hard to hide seams on seed stitch, but it's not that noticeable, and it's certainly no more noticeable than it would if I had seamed it together. Right. So, which was the other option. So I'm happy with it, and Elizabeth Zimmerman's pattern was really easy to use, and it made a nice shape. And I, I actually really love this square neckline, the way that it is. I really love it. But the pattern has a stand-up, like a two-inch thing. Almost like a cowl. Almost something. like a cowl that stands up, and this is just, it won't look good if it's this wide. It just won't. Mm. It needs to be just a little bit shorter, and if I had, it was just really hard to tell. Elizabeth Zimmerman's instructions weren't very clear on how many stitches I should have left over, mm. um, so I just kind of guesstimated, and I guesstimated wrong. So, right. anyway, what I will be doing today when I go home is I will be ripping that back, and it will probably take me another couple of hours to re-knit it all the way across, but it's not that big a deal. The only pain is that you work back and forth across this stitch, and so I have to do some of the work on the reverse side, and it's just really kind of hard to figure out, like, if I have to cable when I'm on the reverse side, it's like too much brain... <laughs> 
you know, I'm like, okay, I, I want it to slant this way, but I'm on the other side. It's just, it takes longer. It's just like my brain has to work too hard. That's funny. But um, I don't think it'll be a problem. So this will definitely be on the woolly board tonight, which is Wednesday. It'll be on the woolly board tonight. Um, it might not have the collar piece attached, but because um, that will dry quickly because it's just a strip. So what do you do? The collar piece separate? Yeah, and then you seam it on. I was going to try to to knit it onto it, and then I was like, no, that's just going to be a pain. Oh, just fix that. Have it drying on the woolly board. Do your do cord. The cor yeah, because I don't really care about that. doesn't really need to be blocked or whatever. You know, I might block it a little bit, but it'll dry fast because it's just a little strip of, it's like a, a fan, strip this Put long. a fan on it. That's how I did this. Yeah. So I know it's more the big sweater with two sides mm. takes longer to dry, but a little strip of cable will definitely be dry. And I might actually finish the strip of cable today, too. I just... You know, I'm not pushing Your myself. Your concern is the main body. I just the want the main body of the sweater because I can sew the um, collar onto it on Friday night. You know, it'll take what 20 minutes yeah. to sew the collar on, so I'm not worried about it. So I'll definitely be wearing this as long as the weather cooperates and it looks like it will. Um, and uh, I'll be relieved. I'll wear it on next week's show so you can see what it looks like. As long as it's not 80 degrees here. Well, yeah. If it's hot, I might put it on next week's show, but then I will be quickly taking it off. But I really, I do really like how it came out. I'm, I'm excited to see how it blocks out and all the stitches even out. I love the out. color. I love the color, too. I'm it's really, really happy with it. What's the name of it? Veritas? This is um, Dream in Color, classy in the Dusky Aurora Dusky colorway. Aurora. Okay. And I think I only used five skeins, but I'm missing a skein, so I might have used like five and a half, and I might be on my sixth skein. I can't tell. Mm. But um, I have, uh, I brought it with me. I haven't done, I need to do a little more, but I have almost a whole skein left. So it was, it called for 1,500 yards. I did not, I definitely did use 1,500 yards. Oh, good. So if anyone's worrying about that. But I did do a lot of modifications, and I did detail all of my mods on the project page in case anybody wants to try to replicate so, it. so pretty. I love it so much. I can't wait to see how it looks fully blocked out and finished. And I'm just happy that it's almost done because it's been kind of stressing me out <laughs> trying to get it done. I, I hate knitting on a deadline. I don't know why I always do that to myself. <laughs> well, you know, I'd say I do too, but I'm not. I'm just as bad with my test knits because that's a deadline. Yeah. Oh, so anyway, love that. That's Gawain by Allison Greenwell. It's seven dollars on Ravelry, and it's an excellent pattern if you want to knit it in pieces. You don't have to be crazy like me and rewrite the pattern for it to be knit in one piece. I just I'm glad that I did it though. I've never done that particular um, Elizabeth Zimmerman shoulder strap thing, and I kind of like it. Okay. Like I think it would make a really nice um, stockinette mm -hmm. style sweater. I like the style mm. of it. So cool. That's it for me on the needles. Okay, rate your date. I have one to rate. This is Lisa Beamer. I'm sorry, this is the Ridgeline by Lisa Beamer of 90% Knitting or Fiber Nymph. Um, <clears throat> it's kind of wonky on the blocking because I don't have blocking wires. She didn't have time to borrow mine. Yeah, so it's got some points, but I actually like it. I kind of like the points. Um, it gets so a little this character. <clears throat> is done with Patton's Tweed Worsted on US 9. She asked for a drapey fabric. I blocked it to the inch of its life type of deal. Yeah. Um, it's got a slip stitch pattern texture to it, which yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, is really nice. I'd be careful with what kind of yarn you want to do this pattern with. Um, when I first started, it started from the center down, and I have to honestly say, I finally got, you know the tabs that they work? Finally figured out how to do that. <laughs> My tab never, I mean, that doesn't look like a tab. No, it looks great. Uh, you know what I mean? I finally figured out how to do those center tabs. <laughs> I always how just many have is. trouble with getting my provisional cast on to unwind for well, that. Well, this one you don't. You just pick up stitches. Oh, but yeah. But it never looked the same. It always looked like, you know, that's where you started. It finally came uh, out. It came out nice. So when I first started it, you start with this here. And I'm like, okay. Looks good. Well, now that you have the whole thing, it's kind of like judging a book by its cover. Now that I have the th whole thing done, I really, really like it. Yeah, it was it was hard to tell whether the um, the slip stitch was going to be enough to really stand out. And once it you see the whole thing, it's actually really pretty. It is. It's really, really pretty. It's very well written. 
uh, pattern. We've fixed some errors that were just, you know, typical either typos or whatever. Um, I think she's planning on getting the pattern out by the end of this month, beginning of November. Um, I know we weren't supposed to have this finished. We didn't need to have this finished until October 24th, 25th, somewhere around there. Um, but it was a simple knit. And again, I did mine on worsted. It took just over two skeins. Okay. I had to crack into a third. Exactly 240 grams, which works out to 504 yards. Now, patents, I thought, well, gee, patents doesn't have as much. It has 210 yards. So that's for 20, so it took 64 yards, not even cascade 220. Um, where I ran out, it was so funny. Just so you know, where I ran out is I was on the last right side row garter stitch. No, <laughs> the last wrong side row garter stitch, and then the... I had one more garter stitch to go and then the bind off. So very close. Very close. But the way I did the bind off, and I'm not sure if, I don't know if that's how I would do it. I did the super stretchy bind off, mm -hmm. which really doesn't need to, I mean, it needed to be somewhat stretchy. I think you could have done it on a larger needle, but. Um, I like it. I really, I really like it. It comes to a nice point, but it's really, the way for some reason, because I'm tighter, this Kind of curled in a little. Yeah. But that's because I'm tighter yeah. on my edges. But I like it. Yeah, we, I like how it's like a bat wing kind yeah, of Yeah, I, I really, I really, really like the shawl. It's pretty. It was supposed to be a gift. Uh, we were discussing that the person. <laughs> I don't think that the gift the person would like, it. would like it. It will be a gift, but not for the intended person that it was knit for. And I don't think that the person would. Not she would appreciate it. She's a knitter, but I don't, I don't think, think she'd she would really wear, wear it. it. And I really want this to be worn. Um, one thing that we talked about today is this slip stitch is really pretty, and I like it on here. It kind of looks like like woven cloth or it whatever. It does. It's really but nice. But we were saying it would look even prettier in a tone on tone variegated yes. or kettle dyed yarn. Something like even like this kind of variegation where it's lightly variegated. This is Dream and Color Gothic Rose. But it would not do well on a very like. On my mini variegated knit. I would not do it on a, like that. Something like that. I think like you the, would lose the, the, the um, mystery stitches. knit that we did for uh, Crazy Kitty, where you were deliberately getting a highly variegated yarn. I would not pick for that. But it would look so Pretty gorgeous on a nice in tonal. a tone on tone. And or the a tweed. Guide. I actually, I, I love patterns. I yarn. actually loved. I like the. I like the way this yarn looks. I think it's really pretty. Um, I mean, if I do a sweater, it will, I think it will be in patterns just because it's. Economical again. You can get these at the box stores with coupons. Yeah, and it's and they, good. It's I was a good looking at uh, when I had to go get another skein of this because I bought originally two. I just grabbed one. I didn't care about the dye lot because I was only going to use a little. It happened to be the same dye lot. Worked out that way. They had a black tweed with red specks and stuff. Ooh, like oh, that's pretty. pretty. Um, so I really I'm thank you, Lisa, for letting me test this. The test knit this. I really, yeah, I can't say. I really, really love it. I love how it came out. I would definitely do this again. Um, I know, side. I know. I'm looking mm -hmm. at it. That's why. Um, I would definitely do this again. I really enjoyed doing it in worsted. And I don't know how the others, I know Steve did his in a lighter worsted. Steve from Dramatic Knits did his in a lighter worsted. And Melissa and Melia Bella is doing hers in fingering, I think. And there's a couple of the test knitters. Um, I don't think they're podcasters, though. But it just, and because of the way that it blocks, it just sits on the shoulders nice. Yeah, I love it. It's beautiful. It does have a point, so it's going to point right to my big old butt. But that's okay. i got a big old butt. So I like it. Thank you. It's nice and toasty warm. And yeah, it's beautiful. Love, love, love. I do. I really love the fabric. You keep it for yourself. Keep it for yourself. It's so nice. It's just not going to happen. You know that. All you right. know that. So um, uh, that's all for rate my dates. I have no dates to rate because I have not finished anything because I'm still working on the sweater. Sorry. Super boring. 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 Huge dates. Huge dates. Because even though I said I wasn't going to cast on for any shawls, I lie, <laughs> I lie like a rug. Uh, I didn't cast on anything, but I did sign up for another test knit. <laughs>
This is Which a- she then tried to justify to me. <laughs> this test knit was brought to my attention by a viewer. So, Hi, Susan, Susan, it's all your fault. <laughs> So, uh, it was a fairly large one, and I was really hemming and hawing about it because it's a shawl with a cable, a lot of cables. And I'm like, I don't know if I want to do that many cables, but I figured if she can do a cabled sweater, I can do a cabled shawl. But the only, the only large amount of yarn that I had, because I didn't want to go out and buy more, I just bought this, which is fine, is my... Debbie Bliss Alpaca Silk. Oh, yeah. So I did a quick little test swatch and seeing how the Alpaca Silk would handle cables. I did look through Ravelry and it looked good, but I wanted to test it. So this was a one repeat of the Cable Cozy mug. Oh, right. (laughs) (laughs) Your go-to cable now. Well, well, it's just, it was a 22-stitch thing. Right. Perfect. And um, it actually came out really nice. I think it will be... Really good. I will say I had to, I was at a smaller size six because, it, you know, it's a small thing here. I had to go to my knit picks because of the pointy edge to do cabling without a needle because this splits like no tomorrow. Yeah. And it's I very loosely briefly applied. I'm looking, so soft. I know, briefly looking at the pattern that was given to us just this morning, I think it is only two cables, so I should be able to cable without a cable needle. Yeah, you should. Um... I may have to borrow somebody's Addy Clicks Turbo Lace. Whatever you should have told me. I would have brought them over. I wasn't thinking about it I'll until just now. I'll give them to you when we go on our trip. So, um, this will be on the needles. I did. I haven't mentioned the shawl. I haven't mentioned the designer. This isn't her pattern. This is from the Cable Cozy. I am going to get permission first to oh, see if I can idea. talk about it. Um, I don't think she'll mind, but again, I'm not sure. So, <laughs> this is one of my future dates. And uh, along with more mittens, because, you know, mittens are good to go gifts. <laughs> well, we have a mitten knit along coming up. <laughs> I know, but you're so crazy. <clears throat> you and your gifts, man. <laughs> hey! I, I have think a... it's very generous. <clears throat> no. Not knocking the gift-giving idea. No, 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 no. no. Let me funny. explain. <laughs> My son, Zachary, has like six people involved in his educational career alone. There's six teacher gifts. Right there. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about general gifts because there are certainly people who do not qualify for gifts in my life. <laughs> certainly not hand <clears throat> gifts. No. Oh, well, no. They get gifts. But, like, my brother, I love knitting for my brother. He appreciates my hands. I don't knit for my husband. He loses things. Uh, the one thing I actually have to fix for my husband, which I need to put on the needles, is I made him, and you'll <gasps> see these. Oh, my God. <laughs> I made him a pair of knee-high socks. Knee-high socks. Knee-high people. socks. Gorgeous socks. Um, I increased one or two sets too much, because they do, they fall down. Oh. So I just got to rip back, and then we knit them. But they're, they're gorgeous so socks. long. Because I asked him, I said, do you want me to rip them back and just make them regular socks? Or if I can fix them, would you like them to be knee highs again? He goes, I'd like them to be knee highs. I'm like, okay. So I was, the only reason I remember that is because I was putting socks away and I saw them. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have the yarn, so I have, I had to go out and buy a second skein. Yeah, that was the bane of my existence a couple of years ago. Yes, I remember those thoughts. But they, they came took out forever. Gorgeous. They did. They came out awesome. I'll have to go back to my notes to see what size needles I did them on because I don't remember. So, Thank hey. God for Ravelry, man. No kidding. No kidding. <laughs> Is that it for your future? Yeah, that's all my future. All right. I have some, I have multiple future dates. Um, the first thing we already talked about, so I'm not going to say much about it, is the Simple Ribbed Cowl by um, Orange Flowers, and it is free on Ravelry, and I'm going to do the Nittimo, um, Nittimos, is Nittimo, it? Nittimo, Nittimo, um, Rav user Nittimo's mods with beads, and I am going to be using my cute little hostess gift from Melissa. I am going to do it out of this gorgeous Green Mountain Green mohair, kid mohair, and oh, it's just gorge. Oh, Isn't mm. that gorge? Love. Now, that was the other thing I was thinking of, too, with this Peruvian. I'm sorry to jump in. I wasn't, for the project, I wasn't sure if it was working well. Yeah. I have um, mm. some alpaca. I may change it over, too. That and these mine. are the beads that I will be using, and I think they are super cute. And look, I have... 
his and hers bling on there. Speaking of his and hers, yeah. I noticed you sent me, she sent me an email about what to expect for the uh, bus for yeah. Mabs. <laughs> it doesn't leave until four. Yeah. They're doing a meet and greet. Yeah. That and um, three. Where? At Into the World. Oh, Ooh. Into the World. Yes. I love her. So I thought maybe we could try and go. Yeah, definitely. We'll see. That'll so be cool. We'll be there. We'll, we'll see them, them, won't we? At oh, we'll, we'll see, see them, them too. But they're, they're giving out goodie bags. Oh. <laughs> I like goodie bags. So that simple ribbed cowl. Um, then I have, I, I, for those of you who are longtime viewers, you'll remember I did my first full skein of hand spun using Sheila's spinning wheel out oh, of the Miss Babs, um, I think it was just... Um, BFL and it was in the Vlad colorway which is a red. variegated red okay. and um, it's I did you bring it with you I didn't bring it with me because I was too lazy to go hunt for it it's, it's in the sense you know you have to know my morning was just crazy but um yeah I had I had already to hunt for my um shawls because I put them away somewhere and I couldn't find them and I was like I'm gonna freeze you brought up a good point though I should probably put mine in my cedar chest yeah I keep I store them so that they don't get holes in them because if I got holes in one of my lace shawls I think I would have to kill myself after all the work you put yeah. into it especially no, Jerry Flood it's a good point I never thought about that and um so anyway I I, I'm guesstimating, I didn't bother to do wraps per inch or anything because I'm totally lazy, but I'm guesstimating that my yarn is about a sport DK weight. It's a little heavier than I fingering. Don't remember, so I, so um, I found two mitt patterns, fingerless mitts, which I thought would be good to use. One of them I'm considering is the Fractured Mitt by Moxie Pearls. Ooh. That's what it looks like. It's free on Ravelry. And it comes in sizes, so you can adjust the size. And where are my show notes? Because I had little comments about this. Um, oh, I guess I didn't. All right, so that's one potential. And it, even though it looks like it's cabled, it's not. It's not? No. Oh, okay. I like the texture of it. I think it'll really bring out the way the hand spun is very good. It's not too crazy. I can't just do a plain thing because it'll it make is me too. Yeah, but it's not um, cabled. Does it explain how to do the stitch? These are free. Right? I don't know. I just I just printed it off. That I like the look of it. That one's kind of like oh, my second right. choice because this one is my number like one choice. I like that one better. And um, this is Sita Fingerless Gloves, and it's based on the stitch from, I'm going to do a little contortion, the Layburn Sock, <laughs> which I just happen to be wearing. Um, funny that you did that I, I, I know. Look, that's that's because you know all my exercise. Look how flexible I am. All right, so <laughs> heaven forbid she take the sock I off know. and put it on my sock blocker. But let's. Do it. This is um, one of my favorite sock patterns that I've ever done. It's a slip stitch, and it looks like diamonds. And I did it in. Um, oh, what's now? I'm not going to be able to think of the song. Colinette Jitterbug. Oh, all right. <clears throat> and which is one of my favorite yarn bases for socks. So um, I am, I did these while I was in Switzerland, when living in Switzerland two years ago, for, or three years ago. I don't know. Whenever it was. Two summers ago. Two I summers think. ago for my husband's job, and um, that's one of the projects that I worked on when I was over there, and I enjoyed every minute of knitting them. So I think I'm probably gonna go for that. I just think those look super cute. Mm -hmm. Aren't yeah, I like cute? those. I, was I just, just really thinking. like them. They give enough interest. I think they'll really show off the variegation. Um, and also, I've done the labor and socks, so I know I'm familiar with how the pattern works. Ooh. So I, I think that's probably what I'm going to go with. But this is my other option in case, you know, I change my mind. Out of curiosity, on the Cita Fingerless, does the slip stitch go to the palm as well? I don't know. Let's find out. It doesn't show a picture, so I wasn't sure. Let's see. Has a right glove and a glove, left glove. My guess is not. Right. Well, that's for the thumb gusset. Yeah, but thumb gussets usually can I be interchangeable. I don't know if I would put it on the um the palms. palms. Yeah, because that would take. It me might snag. Using, yeah, that's, that's what, what I, I would worry about. I can't tell. I love it though. So, um, Cita fingerless gloves also free on Ravelry for those of you who are interested. Okay. It says right here. 
uh, repeat four times, then knit to the end of the round. Yeah, so, so the four it's times only is... on the back of the hand. I think it'll be great because I think the um, pattern will draw the it in so it's a nice tight fit for your fingers, but then it will be smooth on the palm so it won't snag. Because I was concerned about potential snag. But I really do love that. And I have to tell you, I didn't even realize that I had worn my labor and socks until I was looking at this, and I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I wore them. Um, so those are my two future dates. And one of them, probably the cowl, will be cast on before I go to Rhinebeck as soon as my sweater's done. So, because um, I think the cowl will be the most mindless. But I might cast them both on. I don't know. You well, know, sometimes to have you want to switch. Variety. Yeah. Um, and then I, I just know. wanted to say, since... I showed you my socks that I should just tell you what I'm wearing since people usually ask. This is the Jared Flood shawl that everyone remembers. I had so much trouble Somebody with. was plarking about it the other day and said, uh, you know, what's it to knit? And I told her that you knit it and the edging was a nightmare. She goes, that's what I thought. Yeah. But you could totally knit this tape. tape. <laughs> should throw it on my hip. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't have to vacuum it up. And then it's a little bit big on me now because I've lost weight. It still looks good, though. I know. I love it. This is uh, the tea leaf cardigan from Madeline Tosh. Malabriga? It's, nope. It's Dream and Color, of course. Dream and Color Classy <laughs> in the Gothic Rose colorway. You can kind of see it. It's got a, um, like a crinkly ruching, ruching here. And the pattern was written for it to just be a three button, but I made it to be a full one because... I just feel like if you get cold, you want to button it all the way down. Well, plus we're in New England. It can get really cold. Yeah, you do want to yeah. button it all the way down. I, I had it buttoned all the way now, down. Now, is that from the top down? Yeah, this is the top down um, single piece cardigan. Um, it's a paid pattern for Madeline Tosh, and I made this last year. And um, the buttons are some, you'll mm. probably recognize them. I used the similar ones on my um, cowl that I did. Whoops. I can't. There we go. There we go. Everyone, I used the if same. Everyone's now getting nauseous. We apologize. Sorry. <laughs> same ones for my cowl that I did. Mm. I got them from um, Joanne Farber. Oh really? Yes. And I will probably be wearing the hated Jared Flood shawl to Rhinebeck on top of my sweater because it matches the sweater pretty nicely. So if you look, mm. see, very pretty. Mm. Picks up the purple. Picks up the purple, and I'm. Thinking I might need to have a little extra warmth if it's chilly. We'll see. Yeah. But um, I'm hoping yeah. it's not too chilly because I don't have anything nice to wear underneath my shawl. <laughs> Besides t-shirts. But uh, talk about my shawl, my Shetland. After blocking this and looking at that, yeah, you, you need, need to reblock some more. So you better do that, babe. It's gonna soak, and I'm gonna block it today in a room where it will not get ripped out <laughs> by with a fan on it. Because uh, yesterday I blocked this and put a fan on it yes. uh, to help. Uh, just an overhead fan, but it helped. So that was what's that? Future dates. Future dates. Crushes Crush and heartbreaks. heartbreaks. You got anything? Again, I just want to tell you how much I love my Maytag dryer. <laughs> I did five loads of laundry yesterday. Yeah. I have never done five loads of laundry in one day in my entire history of my dryer. Your dryer must have really sucked. It took four. God. me 90-minute cycle plus usually maybe two 90-minute cycles to get a dry. Oh, my God. I never realized That's crazy. how much of a time suck that was. This does it in less than six, 60 minutes. I can actually yeah. do one washer cycle and one dryer cycle at the same time. And before you know it, you know, you're watching a podcast and doing laundry and stuff. The podcast over. Oh, I got to switch over to my laundry. So I'm sorry if it's like beating a dead horse. I love my new dryer. I'm so it's happy. not even new. That's the sad part. It's not even it's new. It's used. It's yeah, my father's still, used dryer. Still. A Maytag. Oh, my gosh. I can't. I I was just like, oh. I, I think that's more. the one, that's the, I think that's the washing machine I have that will never die. <laughs> that I wish Well, I have die. a Kenmore, and Kenmore's a good name. It really is, but I maybe we got a defective one. I don't know. Well, I'm happy for you. I am so happy. Hopefully we won't break this one because we really can't afford another one. So. Um, I have I two it. heartbreaks. First of all, the big heartbreak is that our buttons, mm -hmm. our swag for Rhinebeck, have still not shipped. Yeah. I don't Hopefully think they're going to get here by Friday. So we apologize. We really were hoping to have them. I'm so angry about it. Um, 
I mean, I will give some out at Stitches for people who are going to be at Stitches East if Sheila goes. No, the other that. thing we could maybe do is anyone who says hi is try and get their email address. And yeah, we and have we buttons. could send them. Um, but it just makes me angry. It really does because it's said seven, seven to, to ten, ten days. days to get them ready, and it's been over seven to ten days. Yeah, we ordered them. I mean, I guess I should have ordered them a lot earlier, but I, it didn't occur to me. We that ordered them two weeks ago, I think, on a recording. Yeah. And it's now the third week, yes. I think. So they should have they should have been shipping. They, they should have shipped a couple of days ago. Yeah, and the only reason I know this is because the thing the sub site that we went on, there is no way that you can check your order. You actually have to make a phone call. Yeah, she called. And I sent an email because the call didn't come back. It was an email that I got back. So um, we saw. Yeah, I'm not happy about it. Print out more business cards. Yes, I'm going to print okay, out more business you. cards. We will have business cards to give out. But, yeah, if we don't actually have the buttons, if you give me your email, we'll I'll send see you what I can do. So, um, Cafe Press is my other heartbreak. We've had good, I mean, I, it was really easy to set up the Cafe Press oh. shop. And Cafe Press is really the only place that you can do what we're doing, which is sell things that you designed yourself without taking on the financial burden of buying up a bunch of blank t-shirts and having somebody print them for you and then right. hoping that you'll sell them all, right. which is the other option. And they take care of everything. Like, we're not involved with the shipping or any of that stuff. They do the, they collect the money. They do the shipping. It's all them. All I did was submit the designs. So I'm happy that I could do that because I know a lot of people wanted the, um, the, the cartoon things, and it was a lot of fun to do. But, you know, they ran out of the plus-size shirts. And I know that I've ranted about this before. But I'm already mad that they charge so much for the plus sizes. On top of it, they run out of the plus sizes. And they're not even... I, I heard from one person that she ordered other t-shirts, not ours. And some of their plus size t-shirts are not as long as the other ones. Oh. So, you know, you know how it is when you buy a t-shirt and it's just too short and you have to keep tugging it down? It makes you feel self-conscious. Yeah. And the one thing that a plus size shirt shouldn't do is make you feel self-conscious. Right. It should be designed so that it makes you feel comfortable. So, um, I was really disappointed to hear that. And, um... We're sorry. I'm sorry for anyone who wants to order a plus size thing. And I am putting... Cafe Press CEO on the same list as Blip TV for people that I'd like to go and punch in the face. You're on my punch in the face list. <laughs> don't want to be on that list. So that's my other, yeah, don't get on that list. <laughs> I've actually never punched anyone in the face, but I, you know. We all dream about it. I dream about punching Blip TV CEOs in the, in the face because they make my life so difficult. So that's it for crushes and heartbreaks. Yeah, I just had my dryer crush. Um, bobbles and bling. I got one thing. You got something. Ooh. I Yay! got my Knit One Heart 2 podcast bag. She will be carrying that at Ryan Duck. I will be carrying my needle end bag. I just didn't, as much as I like my Knit With Heart or whatever. Is it Knit With Heart? It just... It says Knit With Heart. Yeah, I should have gotten that one, but oh well. No! Knit One Heart 2. Yeah, well, I well, should have because it had you on, it. on it. But <laughs> we'll make another one with you on it that has a cool phrase. Thanks. We will come up with one that has a cool phrase. <laughs> That's not mean, like say hello to my new land, which nice. I wore to school to pick up my daughter the other day. Anyone comment? Wow, this, this is, is nice. A it's a nice bag. big bag. I'll show you. Excuse me. I have mine here. It's huge. They're nice, roomy bags. I think it'll hold a lot. I just love it. I should carry this to school. I wonder, uh, I know a lot of people looked at it and I wondered if they noticed that it was me. Like, you know, probably what I mean? not. No <laughs> offense, but probably. No, not. I know, but I wondered if they were like, I just thought it was kind of funny. They, everyone at my kids' school, well, Knows they think it. I'm weird because I knit all the time. I'm like the weird knitting mom, but I just met like weird sewing mom, so I'm really happy <laughs> yeah, about you that. You can't take your sewing with you. I know. But, um, so I wondered if they thought that, but... Any bobbles and bling? I do. I oh. have bobbles and bling. The first thing I wanted to show you is I went to the store in um, Harvard Square, Cambridge. We went there this Monday on the holiday called Ink or Black Ink. Black Ink. Anyway, I got the cutest canvas zip bags there for... I like them. Office supplies. There's, um, the scissors, 
the um, paper clip and uh, I think that's a clothes. Protractor. Oh. Is, is it, it a or a clothespin? Oh, sorry. Pen. I thought it was protractor. Clothespin. Well, I'm looking um, at it upside down. They're heavy duty. Protractor. They have a heavy duty grommet and they have this heavy duty ring that holds them all together. So I thought they would be perfect for my crazy Sheila. I was okay. I will admit I was already a nail polish like whore before <laughs> before I ever even knew Sheila. I have a lot of um, nail polish. But then Sheila told me that she was watching these nail art videos, and then I watched one, and then I was, like, really back into the nail polish again. I'm not wearing any today. I'm not either. My fingers are just atrocious right now. But after watching some of these nail art videos, I heard about these things called Conad. It's a nail stamp, and um, they're really expensive. But I found some by Bundle Monster <laughs> that are, are, like, I got 21 of them for $17. See, oh, yeah, there. see our light? Oh, okay. Tilt it back, so there. There you go. It has different, those are each things that you can stamp on your nail. You put the nail polish Of course, it would be nice in. if you had at least one stamp. I just, I didn't have time because I've been working on my sweater. I know, but. Um, this is the stamper. You put the nail polish on the thing. You pick up the nail polish with this, and then you roll it onto your finger. And you can find online tutorials that will show you exactly how they work. It's um, another different If time. you search on Conad, K-O-N-A-D, tutorial. Yeah. I'm trying to find the one with the lips. Oh, here's one for maybe Halloween. Yeah, they have like a um, spider, spider web. And a spider web. <laughs> I know this is crazy. I put and bats. I put cupcakes on and my daughter's nails. I heard a nails. witch. Yeah, it's super oh. cute. And then you have this where if you want to give yourself like a... A whole nail design. Make it look like cloth almost. And then let me find the French tip ones. Yeah. Like this. It would be like more of a French tip one. Yeah, you just do it on the tip of your nail and it has a little design. I, I thought they were super cool and I did cupcakes on my daughter's fingernails. I painted her nails blue and I put purple cupcakes on them. It was kind of cute. And I want to do And I'm fun. sorry, for those who like pot. <laughs> they have a marijuana one <laughs> and a peace sign. That must be the hippie disc. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> and the peace sign. Yeah, that's the hippie disc. It's just kind of fun. They, it comes with full nail designs, nail tip designs, and then individual like designs that you could like stamp on. Talk about the one that you liked using the lips. Oh, I saw one. See the lip? It's really, it's a kiss. And somebody um, that I watched a tutorial from did something they called the French kiss manicure. They did a French um, manicure with the pale pink background and the white tips. And then on a couple of the nails, they put a red Did they have longer kiss. nails? They have yeah. really nice, I mean, most of the people that use these have really long nails. My nails are never long enough to use some of these designs. But I just thought it was fun. I got them on Amazon. It was $17.99. And I had free money from my Amazon rewards and we're gonna card. we're going to try it. We're going to try it after this. So yeah. that's my crushes. I mean, my bobbles and bling. That's it. The bags and all of my nail polish. Her, all her nail polish. Uh, gossip and innuendo is uh, Rhinebeck. Rhinebeck, baby. How many days? Today is Wednesday. So Thursday, Friday. 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 Yay! I got babysitting all set up. We're planning on leaving noonish. Noonish. Um, the hotel is booked. Yeah. Um... The bus is booked. Yeah, we got confirmation on that. We got direct instructions on we have to be there at quarter of seven with our own coffee. They will They serve a serve breakfast. Food. They do muffins or something. Um, uh, we can bring our own food, which I was planning on bringing some snacks. Yeah, I always bring snacks, cause especially on the drive home. And there's, I, I mean, for those of you who've been to Rhinebeck before, the food lines for the vended foods, some of them are outrageous. Oh, really? I always eat either really early or really late, like at three, um, to avoid the heavy lines. And there are certain things, like their artichoke, fried artichoke, or what, some artichoke thing, I don't even know what it is, like the line will be like a mile long. Well, I know watching, um, when I first started watching podcast, I um, caught Melissa and Sean, and they were really disappointed because he likes... I want to say lamb stew. Yeah, there's a lot of lamb stuff there, yeah, which seems which... kind of cruel. But <laughs> you but know, the says... sheep and wool show, and there's a bunch of live <laughs> sheep there, and they're like... He says okay. that always runs out, and I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> I don't like lamb. I mean, last year I was sick. I got sick on the bus. <laughs> You did? Yeah, that wasn't good. And um, I was, don't you remember, last year I was hospitalized no. three days before I went to Rhinebeck. Do you remember? 
I, I had a, an asthma flare and I was hospitalized overnight <laughs> and they gave me a gift card from Target because they felt bad. Oh, that was a ten dollar gift card. Do you remember that? I'll tell you where I was. Well, I wasn't quite in the hospital, but I couldn't go because Zachary was on the list. Zachary was on the list. That's why you didn't go last year. Right. But well, we're coming up to a year anniversary. Can you believe that? I know. That's another. I But year. I was hospitalized, and I have to say. I can't believe that was a year ago. I know. Oh, my God. It doesn't seem no. that long ago. I, I hardly ever get asthma flares. I have um, medication-induced asthma from all the heart medication I was on after my heart failure, which I'm no longer on. But once you get asthma, you have it. Yeah. So, usually it's pretty well controlled just with me being careful and using my inhaler, but um, I had a really bad flare, and I haven't had a flare since, and I was hospitalized overnight. No, because you overnight. figured out that you can't stop taking your allergy I know. Medicine. I take allergy medicine every day, and she anyway, I did. stopped because it was uh, September. <laughs> it was, it was, she stopped. It was October. I stopped because it was October. I was like, I don't need to take this anymore, and I immediately had Lesson a very learned. severe flare. And um, for a lot of crazy reasons, they ended up keeping me overnight in the hospital because they thought that I had uh, um, some kind of a blood clot in my lung. That was they, they were concerned that I might have that, and I kept telling them, I swear it's just an asthma attack. Nobody would listen to me. Anyway, I stayed in the hospital overnight, and it was just like two days before Ryan Beck, and I was on all this crazy medication. Steroids. Like yes, steroids. and I was all like, steroids make me crazy. But... um. On Sunday night, my husband made a Chinese meal from the cookbooks that he got in China. <laughs> and he made it with um, Szechuan peppercorn, which we love, and um, those red chili peppers, the Chinese red yeah, the chili Thai, peppers. Yeah, the Thai, Thai the peppers. little peppers. And he did it in the wok. Mm -hmm. And um, he had all the spices and the chilies in the wok, and he did those first in the hot oil and it steamed up and he didn't turn on the fan. It was like mustard gas from World War One. Everyone in the house was like, Ugh! and I got the worst asthma attack from it. Oh, no. And I'm still asthmatic from it. Like I've been taking inhaler hits. I said to my husband, I do not believe you are giving me an asthma attack right before my back again. Like unbelievable. I will not be happy. And I said, why don't you turn the fan on? He's like, I never think of it. I'm like, well, you almost poisoned us. It was like mustard gas. Everyone was like, it was really bad. Really. So don't cook red chilies in oil. And these Thai peppers, we use them a lot. They're um, so spicy. They are very spicy. We make this Vietnamese dish, and I make fish sauce for my husband. And it's funny because here I am, not a lick of Asian in me. <laughs> a little white girl from New Hampshire. <laughs> he loves my my uh, fish sauce. That's he doesn't awesome. make it. I make it. And he goes, it goes out, comes out so good when you make it. I'm like... Follow it's your recipe. one skill. Well, we better, we better cut this short. We're at 57. All right. So, anyways, <laughs> so uh, right back. You, look for us right back. back. I'll either look like this or maybe like we this. Are gonna <laughs> do, we're going to do minimal filming there because it's kind of too crowded and loud. We're not so going to interview. We're not going to interview people. But we are going to, if we do a meetup, we'll film there. Yeah, we'll film there. Just, you know, this is everybody. Um, we'll probably film what we bought at the end of the day. And yeah, we'll just do a quick little you know, thing. I'll put it up um, sometime early next week. Yeah, it sounds good. So thanks for watching. If you're watching on iTunes, you know, leave us a rating, either a star rating or a quick little um, comment, which I've been reading, and we have some great comments. Thank you talk very faster, much for leaving. Talk faster. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, if you need to reach us, we're at knitoneheart2 at gmail.com. If you want to read the show notes, they will be up on time this week at knitoneheart2.blogspot.com. Have a good week. Yes. See you at Rhinebeck. Knit with Knit heart. heart. Bye. Bye.